morning. Welcome to Towson United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Stephanie, and I am so glad to be worshiping with you, whether you're joining us here in the sanctuary or joining us online. Uh, we extend a special, uh, a special welcome to those of you who are here for the first time. We're so glad that you are with us today. And if you haven't already, please stop by the welcome desk in the foyer where we have a gift for you. Uh, we do ask that everyone check in for worship, and you can do that by visiting our website, towsonchurch.org, and clicking the check in here button, or you can use the church app, or you can fill out a card from the back of the pew and drop that in the offering plate when it comes around a little bit later in the service. Now, if y'all don't mind, I'm going to take a moment of personal privilege and let y'all know that I'm really, really happy to have my mom, Sherry, here, and my mother-in-law, Betty, here. Y'all wave like this. Just wave. <laughs> Uh, they, they are here visiting from Texas this weekend, and they're here so that they can see the plays that my children are in this weekend. So it's been a busy weekend and a fun weekend. Uh, Y'all be sure to say hi to them after worship. All right, and now will you please stand as you're able, and let's join together in the call to worship, and you can find the words printed in your bulletin or on the screen. We are called to be God's children. Fear and doubt are gone. Joy and celebration ring in our hearts. Come, let us raise our voices in song. Let us offer our hearts and souls to God in prayer and praise. Amen. And now let's sing together our opening hymn, number 327, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Will you please join with me in the opening prayer? God of hope, we see your love poured out for us in all the world. Make us more like you. Teach us to live together as one community, human and beyond human. 
creature and created to your glory, so your love is known among all the living. Amen. As you're being seated, the children are invited to come forward for the children's moment with Pastor Stephanie. Hello, friends. Hi, friends. We got more coming. Oh, yeah, they're coming from down there even. All right. All right, we've got some coming over here. We're going to talk about some stuff. This is awesome. We got kids coming from all directions. <laughs> all right, I want to show y'all something. Let me tell I thought there was one more. Oh, there she comes. There she comes. All right, y'all take a look at this. Take a look at this, guys. Do y'all know what this is? I printed it real big so you can see it. Yeah. It's a library card. What do you do with a library card? Yeah, you can go to the library. And what, what can you get at the library if you have a library card? Books. Books and what else? You can get all kinds of stuff. You can get CDs. You can get magazines. You can get uh, videos. Or, do they still do videos? DVDs probably, I guess, nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. You can get all kinds of stuff with the library. And you can even use your library card online so you can read online books. When you become a member of the library, you get all this stuff that you get to use. And do you know how much it costs? You know how much it costs to get a library card? Zero dollars. That's right. It's free. Everything is free. So you go in, you sign up, and you become a member of the library, and you get to use all the stuff for free. That's pretty good, right? You have to return them. Right. You return them, you borrow them, and you share with everybody, right? All right. So let me read you something from the Bible. This is from Acts chapter 2. Uh, verse 42 and 43, um, they devoted themselves, they being all the Christians, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and the prayers. And then I'm going to skip down. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would even sell their possessions and their goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. That's how the first Christians lived. They lived together, and they supported one another, and they would even sell their own stuff so that they could share with everybody else. And do you know how much it costs to be part of that new family of Christians? Zero dollars. All they had to do was say, hey, we want to be part of this family, and they got their own sort of membership card, not a real one, but they became part of the family of God. And you, yes, that's right. And so now, guess what? We get to be part of the family of God, right? Yep. All right, so I made you an official membership card. To church. No, no, it's to the family of God. Look. Oh, yeah, see? Official membership card to the family of God. And then it says, you are loved. So, and I went to seminary, so I get to pass these out. <laughs> All right, here, pass these out down there. Make sure everybody gets one. Everybody gets an official membership card to the family of God. All right, good. Adults, if you want one, you have to call me and let me know, okay? <laughs> I didn't make that many today, sorry. All right, okay. So are you ready to be part of the family of God? Yes, all right, good, good. All right, let's, uh, let's pray together. Holy God, thank you for making me a part of the family of God. And thank you for this family at Towson United Methodist Church. At Towson United Methodist Church. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you can go either back to your seats or to pray and play. Announcements. If you look at the back of your bulletin, you see that we have a lot of announcements. I invite you to look over those or visit our website for all the latest news. I want to highlight three things this morning. First, your last chance to see God's spell is this afternoon at 2 p.m. in Fellowship Hall. It's a phenomenal show. I encourage you to go. 
Second, if you would like to know more about what's going on with the United Methodist Church, be sure to sign up for one of our upcoming information sessions. You can find those dates in the bulletin or online. And finally, Parents' Night Out is April 26th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. Children are invited to hang out at church and play games, watch a movie, eat food, and have fun. The event is free, but registration is required. If you'd like more information about any of these events, or if you'd like to register, check out, uh, <clears throat> check out towsonchurch.org slash news or use the church app. Now, Allison Jackson is going to share about Vacation Bible Camp. Morning, y'all. We are two weeks away from the deadline to register to volunteer for this year's Vacation Bible Camp, and we are in need of a few more volunteers. The energy at Vacation Bible Camp is amazing. There are some kids like my sons who are born and raised in this church and come and are familiar with a lot of the stories that we hear. But you also have kids from the community that come in who have never heard these stories before and they are wowed. Seared in my memory is a time from a few years ago when one little girl was like, this is amazing. It's so fun to work at Vacation Bible Camp because you see the energy and for some really the first time that they're hearing the message of Christ. Here are the practical ways that you can help out. If you have the full week and hours, July 8th through 12th, 9 a.m. to noon, 8.30 for volunteers, please consider becoming one of our station leaders. We are looking for someone to lead the children in crafts. I know y'all like crafts. Hi, Henry. And then someone who would run the sports and recreation. I've worked with that before, a lot of fun, hula hoops, balls, you've got that. You will be provided with curriculum and instructions on what to do each day when you sign up, and you'll have plenty of time to review ahead of time. There's also going to be a training on June 2nd right after church to go over everything and answer all of your questions. In addition, we could always use more group leaders. The more group leaders we have, after all, then the more children we can open it up to. The group leader is the person who stays with a grouping of children for the day. They walk the children from station to station and helped as needed in each area. They are there to keep the children engaged and energized. A group leader can be either a youth or an adult. We'll have one to two group leaders per group depending on the number of children in the group. If you only have a few days or a few hours, then think about joining our snack team. You'd be very popular. And helping to get the snacks ready each day. Or you can help collect our missions daily and help count and organize what we have. We also need one person who will speak to the children about missions on Friday. Lastly, you could sign up to be a helper in one of the station areas and be there to help on the days and hours you are available. Our stations are crafts, science, music, recreation, and storytelling. I lead that one, you know you'd have fun. This is great for those that love acting or just telling engaging stories. For those that really wanna be a part of the whole thing but can't help that week, we have a place for you too, something for everyone. Starting this week on Wednesday nights from 6.30 to 7.30, you can drop in and help with decorations and other prep work that needs to be done ahead of time. We will also have a decorating day for those that don't need the training on June 2nd right after church and setup will be held on July 7th right after church. If any of this sounds like it's for you, and there's got to be something for everyone, right? Then please stop at the back on your way out and see Lissa O'Donnell. Hey! And she can help you get signed up and any further information you need. And note also this QR code. Hope you can help. Thanks. Thank you, Allison. And now uh, we turn to God in praise and prayer, not from a position of power and strength, but from the broken edges of our lives, from the broken edges of the world and the church. And so we offer our prayers of confession, trusting in the one who is reconciling all things. Let us pray together our prayer of confession. Gracious God, you give to us your greatest gift, your son, Jesus Christ, as we still don't understand what is going on. You call us to be people of courage and hope, and yet we run and hide, doubting and fearing. You challenge us to proclaim our faith, 
but we huddle in darkness, whispering our words of discouragement. Shake us up, Lord. Forgive us when we seem to need prodding over and over again. Help us to see the presence of Jesus in our lives and remind us of all that he taught us to help us to live as disciples, serving you by serving others. Change us, remold us, make us truly the disciples you have called us to be. Amen. And now take a moment to confess your sins to God in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, glory to God. Amen.
Amen, amen. In our Grace in Action moment today, we are highlighting Native American Ministry Sunday. And this is one of six United Methodist Special Sundays. And these are six Sundays where the entire denomination recognizes uh, these different causes and takes up an offering to support efforts in our local communities, in our nation, and around the world. If you'd like to support this ministry, you can use, uh, you can just mark your gift with uh, Special Sunday or Native American Ministry Sunday, uh, either your check or your envelope, and drop that in the offering plate. Or you can visit our um, website, towsonchurch.org slash give, and click on other, do not, other donation from the fund drop-down menu, and then type in Special Sunday in the notes field. And to learn more about this day, we have a video for you. Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Today, the process of making disciples is not intended to cause divisiveness related to cultures and traditions, especially with Native Americans. They must not lose their unique identity in God's family and no longer be invisible. We can't turn back the calendar, but we can continue to grow our partnership with our Native brothers and sisters to make disciples of Jesus right here in the Native American community. We can empower them to share God's light in these distinctive cultures so they join in the transformation of the world. That is why your support of Native American Ministry Sunday matters to so many followers of Christ. Through this special Sunday offering of the United Methodist Church, you can partner with local congregations to find fresh ways to minister within these unique communities and ensure a brighter tomorrow for our Native American brothers and sisters. Your support empowers people in a variety of communities, including reservations, urban, and rural settings. It strengthens local churches and outreach to benefit the entire community, but especially those of Native ancestry. Your gift makes it possible to equip Native American seminary students to learn to honor and celebrate Native American culture in their own vibrant United Methodist Ministries. Together, we can continue to create a bright future that equips Native Americans to authentically worship and serve Jesus today as only they can do. When you give on Native American Ministry Sunday, you join with all of the people of the United Methodist Church, Native and non-Native, to write a new history, one that respects diversity and promotes justice even as it unites us all to transform the world as disciples of Jesus Christ. Because together, we do more. And thank you also for your continued financial support of the work of ministry, mission, and maintenance at Towson United Methodist Church. If you would like to support the church today financially, you can do that by dropping your gift in the, pew, in the plate when it comes around a little later. When it comes around right now, what am I saying? Oh, my goodness. When it comes around in just a second, or you can give online, of course, at towsonchurch.org slash give. And now let's pray together as the ushers come forward our offering prayer author of life and giver of all gifts, we thank you for the many blessings of our lives. Receive now these gifts and transform them with the power of your love. May they become witnesses to your resurrection, proclaiming your power and forgiveness in our community and throughout the world. In Christ's name we pray, amen.
seated. And now let us pray. Gracious creator, we thank you that you give us to each other. For we discover new dimensions of your grace in the friction and the comfort of life together. In your body, we learn what it means to be whole. In your mercy, help us to set our fear aside, loosen our grip on what we know, if it's keeping us from what you would teach us. We pray, God, for this community and for your church all over the world. You shaped us for service. Show us the good we may do. For when you use us, we come alive. We pray for those who we have labeled useless, for those whose youth and strength are gone, for those whose convictions are strange to us, for those who can't find a place in the economies we trust. And we pray for those who, whose prophetic lives challenge and, and inspire us, sustain such faithful witnesses. And we pray specifically for our loved ones, people of and people connected to Towson United Methodist Church. We pray for Daryl, Phyllis, Mary, Judy, Pam, Tim, Michael, Jody, Nadine, Lizzie, Maria, Mary Lou, Tracy, Lisa, Adam, Tom, Emily, Allie, Joe, and Dennis. We pray for comfort, healing, care, and peace for all of these and for those we've been unable to name aloud. May they know and feel that you are with them. And Lord, we don't know how to pray for peace in broken lands, for justice when the weak have no advocate, for life in the midst of despair. Yet you are the God of Easter, the God of impossible life. Move in stubborn hearts and settled minds. Give all of us courage beyond our imagining that we might follow where you would lead. And all this we pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray saying, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our epistle reading comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. The believers, were devoted, the, the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many wonders and signs through the apostles. All the believers were united and shared everything. They will sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. Every day they met together in the temple and ate in their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. The Lord added daily to the community those who were being saved. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. Amen. Easter season series called Made New, how Easter changes everything. And on Easter Sunday, we talked about how our faith in Christ makes us new. Remember the words of the Apostle Paul from 2 Corinthians. So then, if anyone is in Christ, that person is part of the new creation. The old things have gone away, and look, new things have arrived. And last week, we looked at how Christ helps us to get past our past. Whatever that past 
uh, whatever in the past holds us back. And we talked about how repentance is simply turning away from the past and turning toward God. Remember, again, what Paul said, I forget about the things behind me and I reach out for the things ahead of me. The goal I pursue is God's upward call in Christ Jesus. And now this week we're looking at the early church. You heard Pam read from Acts chapter 2. The book of Acts was written by the same person who wrote the Gospel of Luke. Uh, his name happened to be Luke. Um, listen to the beginning of the Gospel of Luke. Many people have already applied themselves to the task of compiling an account of the events that have been fulfilled among us. They used what the original eyewitnesses and servants of the word handed down to us. And now, after having investigated everything carefully from the beginning, I've also decided to write a carefully ordered account for you, most honored Theophilus. I want you to have confidence in the soundness of the instruction you have received. See, Luke is writing to Theophilus, a name that means one who loves God. Now, we don't know if this is a specific person or if Luke was just writing to anybody who loves God. In any case, he writes a beautiful gospel where Jesus' interactions and relationships with uh, what are considered to be the outcasts, those relationships are highlighted. People like fishermen and tax collectors and lepers and sick people and, and widows and women in general and on and on. So Luke tells the whole story of Jesus from conception to his birth, to his trip to the temple when he was 12, to his time in the wilderness as a young man, and then with his, uh, to his time with the disciples where he's teaching and preaching, and then to his last week leading up to the cross where he turns over tables in the temple and he shares the Passover meal with his disciples and he prays at Mount Olive. He's arrested. He's sent to sham trials, then to the cross, but ultimately to resurrection. And then Luke writes another book, the book of Acts. It starts this way. Theophilus, the first scroll that I wrote you concerned everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning right up to the day he was taken up into heaven. Before he was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instructed the apostles he had chosen. And after his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. And while they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. He said, this is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then Luke chronicles the first 30 or so years of the Christian movement. He tells the stories of how the message and the way of Jesus spread from Jerusalem to other parts of the region. And he tells wild stories of the apostles, that word means messenger, uh, encountering violence and imprisonment and shipwreck just so they could share the good news. They went through all of that so that they could share the good news of Jesus. And the book of Acts is where we find ourselves today. Right at the beginning. By the time we make it to Acts chapter 2, verse 42, the followers have just experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, what Jesus promised at the beginning of chapter 1. This is what we celebrate on Pentecost Sunday. The Holy Spirit falls, and then Peter stands up, and he preaches this amazing sermon. I mean, it's a really, really good sermon. Acts 2.41 says, those who accepted Peter's message were baptized. God brought about 3,000 people into the community that day. Y'all, I, I, I am not anywhere close to preaching that kind of sermon. <laughs> 3,000 people in one day. That's how this movement started. And then we read how they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the community, to fellowship time, to prayer time. We read about how they pitched in together to take care of one another. Some going as far as selling their property and their possessions so they could help other people in the community. See, this movement, it wasn't just about some guy's cool teachings about how we should be more loving. 
It was a, a movement that established a new family made up of people who were united in Jesus. And then Acts goes on to tell this story of this new family spreading across the land. And Acts 2, 42 through 47, it's a really beautiful picture of what being part of the family of Jesus looks like. And the people are devoted, and they're united, and they share everything. They sacrifice for each other. They worship together. They fellowship together. Their lives are shaped around Jesus. They're the family of Jesus. Now remember, these first Christians were living in the time of Roman occupation. And everyone living under the Roman law was at risk for being persecuted if their beliefs challenged the beliefs of the Romans. And this new group, these Christians, they absolutely challenged the Romans. The followers of Jesus insisted on things like nonviolence and equality. They challenged what it looked like to belong to a community. Notice those who were giving up their property and possessions, they were doing it voluntarily so that it could be distributed in the community. They didn't have to tax each other. There were no taxes. They didn't have to do that. They just took care of each other. What they believed and the way they acted stood out in the larger society and not necessarily in a good way because it challenged so much of what was normal. So these, this new group, they had to cling to one another. They had to watch out for one another. You know, that's what a family does for each other, right? They care for each other. A couple of weeks ago, I was out of the office one day when uh, Kim, our business manager, she got a phone call from one of our members. And he was in a lot of pain, and he thought he needed to go to the emergency room. But he didn't want to use an ambulance. So Kim wasn't quite sure about what to do, but one of our office volunteers, one of our awesome lady office volunteers, I love y'all ladies, she said, well, tell, tell him to call so-and-so. So he hung up, and he picked up the phone, and he called so-and-so. And so-and-so -and -so stopped what she was doing. She got in her car, she went and picked him up, and then she dropped him at the ER, but she stayed with him the entire time, several hours. And then she made sure he got home. That happened right here in this congregation. That's what the family of God does for each other. On Friday night, uh, my daughter was in a play in Annapolis. Y'all know that's a pretty good drive from here, right? When I walked through the doors of the theater, there were two of my church people. They were there, standing there. They got there before I did. They drove all the way from up here, all the way down there to Annapolis to support my family. What a blessing that was to me and my daughter. What an impression that makes to a teenager. Folks, if we're worried about the next generation showing up for church, we've got to show up for them. See, that's what the family of God does for each other. And, and we don't keep this family to ourselves. Last night, I got to see the fellowship players present Godspell. And if you haven't seen it, you really should go this afternoon. It's a lot of fun, and they do a really great job. Um, but one of the songs that they sing, uh, actually the one they sang here last week, is called Light of the World, and it's based on Matthew 5. Let your light shine before all people so they can see the good things you do and praise your Father who's in heaven. We don't keep this community, this family, to ourselves. And we invite everybody. We make the table bigger. How many of y'all have that kind of table that has the extra leaves in it? Right? You can add when you have extra people over and you want a bigger dinner party. We should think of our Christian family like that, except that we have a never-ending amount of extra table leaves. We don't say, oh, sorry, we only have room for eight at our table. No, we just keep putting the leaves in and we keep making the table bigger so that everybody has a place. This is part of the good news of following Jesus. We get to be part of this amazing family and anybody's welcome. I heard about a little boy recently who was determined to learn the Lord's Prayer 
And when he went to church, he would sit in the pew and he would listen intently when everybody said that prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and so on. And after a while, he was finally brave enough to say the prayer out loud. So when the time came during the worship service, he said as loud as he could, Our Father, who art in heaven, I know you know my name. <laughs> now obviously that's not the prayer. Obviously that's wrong, but maybe it's not wrong, right? I know you know my name. I know God knows my name. I know God knows your name and everybody else's name. Everybody is invited to be part of this family of care and love. Now the rest of the book of Acts tells about the tension of who was invited to this movement. And those very first Christians were, were Jewish. And some of them, they weren't too keen on inviting non-Jewish people. And when they were invited, they thought that they should be converted to Judaism before they could be Christians. But ultimately, what ends up happening in the early days of the church is that they figure out that Gentiles are most certainly welcome and they don't have to give up their cultural identity. We people are called, uh, what people are called to give up to be part of the family of God, what we're called to give up is harming each other. We're called to give up harming ourselves. We're called to give up harming our relationship with God. That's what we're required to sacrifice. How we treat each other matters because we're representatives of Jesus. And if we can't love each other as Christians, then how does the rest of the world see us? How does the world take us seriously? Our community, our family, it's not based on all of us looking the same or having all of the exact same traditions and cultures. And this picture of the community of God, it's been around since the Old Testament days of Isaiah the prophet where he proclaims God's words in chapter 66. Because of their actions and thoughts, I'm coming to gather all nations and cultures. They will come to see my glory and they will declare my glory among the nations. Even the Old Testament picture of the future pointed us to the idea that the table is big enough for all of us. And when we're made new, when we're made new, we get to be part of the family of God. And the family is big. And the family is welcoming. And the family is supportive. The family is love. Let's pray. Holy and mysterious God, thank you for bringing me to this to the family of Jesus, this wide family of Jesus that stretches out over land and time. And thank you for bringing me to this particular part of God's family right here at Towson UMC. What a blessing it is to be here with a community that loves me and supports me, that loves and supports my whole family. Help all of us to be the kind of family that people want to be a part of because of the love they see. Help us to love, Lord Jesus. Help us to love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn today is number 557. It's an, old, an oldie but a goodie. Blessed be the tie that binds. So let's stand together as you're able and sing. And of course, you're always welcome to pray at the prayer, well, prayer rail if you need to.
two quick things before the benediction. Uh, first of all, the fellowship players, I don't know if y'all remember, but they started this tradition where they now let uh, the audience and the congregation pick the next play they do. So in the foyer, you'll find two boxes and you can vote for which play you wanna see in the fall. Uh, the choices are I Hate Shakespeare and uh, what's the other one? Arsenic and Old Lace. And the way you vote is with your dollars. So the one that has more dollars, that's the one they'll do in the fall. And then the other announcement that I have, the last one, is that we have a special birthday today. today uh, yesterday was Dr. Roy's birthday. So um, choir, will y'all lead us in singing happy birthday? All right, and now go into the world knowing that you are part of the family of God. You're part of the family of God, and you are loved and valued and treasured. And go in peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.